Hi everyone, it's uh, Tuesday, September 15th. I uh, pray you had a great day yesterday. I hope you connected with somebody. Uh, you know, you, sometimes we think we have to look far away for that, uh, but it, it might be with our husband, with our wife, uh, with our children, with our family, uh, with close friends uh, even, or, or with uh, fe fellow Christians uh, that, that are, are close to us, we can connect with even electronically. Um, so, so sometimes we don't have to look very far. The idea is to share our lives uh, and to share what we're going through. Uh, we, we continue our, our focus on this idea that we've been torn apart uh, by so many things uh, in our lives right now, and, and we're going through this, this time that we're getting hurt, we're, we're trauma. That's, that's what being hurt by this experience, and uh, maybe emotionally, psychologically, physically maybe, huh? uh, and, uh, and even spiritually. Uh, and God is always with us. God is close to the brokenhearted. Uh, and yet we're, we're also called uh, to be there for one another. Uh, and, and it's healthy. In this study that we've suggested, and uh, if you want to know how to get this, uh, you can just go go online uh, to our website, and it tells you how, but beyond disaster. Uh, one of the things it says here is uh, look for ways to connect with others, even if you feel like being alone. It will, it will help you recover. Isolation will slow re your recovery. Isolation will slow re your recovery. In this uh, study, it talks about reactions uh, to, to disaster, to trauma, to what we're going through. And it says, if you have gone through a traumatic experience, you may feel like you are knocked off your feet emotionally and spiritually. This is normal. Uh, the writer of Psalm 42 tells God it feels like chaos roars at me like a flood. I, I think this is amazing. Uh, if we just open our eyes, we see God's people have always been honest with him. Uh, about their emotions, about their hurt, the things that are hurting them, the things they're going through creating trauma in, in their lives. Uh, here, this writer, Psalm 42 says, chaos roars at me like a flood. You feel like that in your life about what we're going through? Like this chaos around us? Things are, are, are just crazy. They're crazy because of the fires. They're crazy because of COVID-19. They're crazy because of the political situations in our nation right now. They're crazy because we see people turn to violence in, in such ways. Crazy everywhere. Uh, yeah, chaos roars at me like a flood. And of course, God is the rock of our salvation. He never changes. Um, but this goes on and says, sometimes people try to uh, seem to seem strong on the outside and hide the chaos they feel on the inside. We call that stuffing it, right? We stuff it. Um, this can slow your progress. It's uh, healthy to be honest about who you are feeling, uh, about how you are feeling about yourself, about others, and about God. And so we need one another to talk this out, to, to, to figure this out. And we'd be amazed at how many times others are feeling what we do. We, sometimes we feel so alone because we think we're the only ones. Uh, and, and, like, and as we get into God's word, we even see that, that uh, God has recorded the feelings of his people for us. So that during this time, we know, hey, there's others that have felt this way too. This uh, section of this study goes on and it says uh, the different ways uh, we react to this. Is sometimes we look for somebody to blame. And, and you know, even if there is someone to blame, uh, it, it really doesn't help us to scream at that person or that, or that, or that entity, whatever it may be, right? Uh, it, 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 we, we think if we can just figure out who to blame, then, then uh, we, it, we'll, we'll somehow be better off. But we're not. We, we, we have to deal with it ourselves. Uh, oftentimes when someone is sick, they, they, they want to blame, so I, I ate the wrong thing, I, I, I did this, I was exposed to that. Well, okay, even if you find that thing, you still got to deal with the sickness, right? Well, we still have to deal with the situation. So, but a lot of us, we, we turn to this, we want to blame somebody. We get angry, upset, and, we're, and we have questions, we don't understand, and we want to blame somebody. Uh, uh, another reaction we can have is that we, we might feel guilty. Guilty that maybe we're handling it so well. Guilty that maybe I should have gotten a job that I wouldn't have gotten laid off from. Uh, there, there's so many ways to feel guilty uh, because of our situation, because of what's happened to us because of, right? Um, and I love what this study does. It, it, turns, um, it turns to the God who has us in his hands and that he has, he, he, nothing has surprised him. It, it's, he, they quote this verse uh, from Psalm 139. When my bones are being formed carefully, put into my mother's uh, carefully put together in my mother's room. When I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. So, so God is in charge. In his providence, he has brought us into this situation that each of us is in, whatever that may look like in your life. Um, 
things are not out of control, um, uh, and and you have nothing uh, to 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 feel guilty about, huh? Uh, God is here, and He's going to turn this uh, to your good. Romans eight twenty eight. God works all things together for our good, but but so that in the midst of these reactions, right? In the midst of of these reactions, uh, this study turns us to the Rock, which is our God. It says, "Wait a minute! God has every day plan in your life. This didn't surprise Him, and He's got good things for you to do, even in the midst uh, of these harsh things that we're going through." And, and the last verse they quote here. Uh, is from Matthew. It's one of my favorite. For only a penny you can buy two sparrows, yet not one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's consent. As for you, even the hairs of your head have all been counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth much more than many sparrows. Somebody asks you how much you're worth, what would you tell them? How about this? I was worth the death of Jesus. If you were the only person on the face of the earth, Jesus would have died for you, and he did. How much are you worth? The death of the only begotten Son of God. That's the price he put on you. Uh, he's got you in his hands. He watches over the sparrows. He watches uh, over the, the flowers. He watches over everything. But you are worth so much. Uh, and in his hands you can rest and know that he has plans for you even during this time. Would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, uh, when these... Uh, harsh times come into our lives uh, and we're traumatized uh, through these experiences. We're hurt in some way. Um, sometimes we feel as if we're alone. Sometimes uh, we want to shut the door and shut everybody out because we think somehow they're not, they can't relate to what we're going through or somehow it's my fault or I'm so angry I don't want to talk to anybody and, and I blame the world for what's going on. Um, in these times, Lord, point us uh, to you and to your word. Your word that says uh, you have plans for us. You've created us. You have every day planned out in your, in your, wonderful, uh, um, in, in, in your wonderful plans for us. And Lord, finally remind us how much we're worth. The very death of Jesus, that was the price that was paid for us. Um, give us your peace. Help us, Lord, to connect to others. Talk these things out to bear one another's burdens. We pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you. Bye-bye.